beautifuls. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here. I love you very much. This is Self Love Talks and today I'm going to talk about how to get to 5D slash ascension and how not to do it. Basically, I wrote a list of what needs to happen versus what people are actually doing and thinking subconsciously, unconsciously that that's going to get them ascended. That's going to bring them up into that 5D frequency and, you know, escape this craziness that's happening in the world right now. So let's just put it straight. I wrote seven things on my list. I want to take you through that. Get your opinion, have some feedback, put my phone on silent, put yours on silent. Um, see what you think, right? See what you think of my list. And I got inspired to write this list today because um, I, yeah, where do I start? Last night, I was up very late, hence looking, feeling quite tired today. I was up very late on a call with about 20 people around the world. It was the first meeting of many, and it happened on the full moon, which was really, really cool. It's the last super moon of the year. And it was quite a gathering. I was like, wow, this is this is really amazing. There were portals, stargate keepers, clan leaders, um, ascension masters. There were people who are experts in science. Uh, experts in politics, um, people who are doing lots of earth work, people who are um, like native uh, indigenous people's leaders, um, all kinds of cool, very knowledgeable, very wise people. Some of them are highly intuitive, very psychic. Um, some of them just like factual experts getting information in the know in places that we're not. We were talking about prophecies. That's the whole reason we were brought together um, is to discuss prophecy and to look at current events, current earth changes, current weather patterns, current um, political situations, current, you know, all kinds of things, signs that are matching up with prophecies to see what's really true, to kind of tease out what's the reality here, what's true, what's real information, what's disinformation, um, yeah, what's fact from fiction, all of that stuff, because I don't know if you saw it, um, there was a video going around in the last week about the prophecy, the Hopi prophecy of the man with the red hat, um, aka Mr. DT, don't know if You've seen that a lot of people associated it with D DT. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so I don't know where that prophecy came from. If you have any information on that prophecy, by the way, and its legitimacy and maybe what it actually refers to, then would you let me know? And any other prophecies that you guys are aware of, like send them in to me. I'd love to hear. Just email me and send it to me. I'd love to or ping it to me on one of my social media channels. Um, so that was why we came together. There was discussions about binary sun systems, about Antarctica. Well, actually, no, I was thinking Antarctica. I didn't get a chance to bring it up. All kinds of, I mean, I wrote a list, a lot of things, right? Um, in terms of solar flares, in terms of um, earthquakes, in terms of the migrations of people, exoduses of people, mass exoduses of people, that is happening. Um, anyway, so I'm part of this group. It, we were there for quite a long time. And I was like wowed because I want to get into all this information and share it more with people again, much like I did when I was doing the roundtables. However, I'm looking at everyone's energy. And the reason I'm talking about this and all these experts, because I know a lot of you out there, if not all of you, are an expert in something, right? You either have really good opinions on something, you research something, you're an expert in your field at something, you're brilliant. And there's a lot of people, uh, sorry, there was everybody on this call last night, really cool, amazing people, highly accredited, you know, they've got their accolades, they've got the badges, they've got the, the works, and it's really impressive. However, I heard something that shook me. And what I heard was this statement that said, this person said, humanity needs to be saved. 
Humanity needs rescuing. And let's just let that ripple out. That's quite a statement to say. Now, I'm not criticizing this person for saying that. I don't criticize anybody for believing anything that they believe in, right? As much as I wouldn't want you to criticize me for believing what I believe in, like live and let live. However, that didn't resonate true with me because I think a statement like that, I think a belief like that, and I don't think this person is the only one that said it or believes it. I think many, many, many people, I can see with my own eyes that many, many people believe that we need to be saved, saved here that you as an individual, as a human being, need saving from this matrix, from this world, from the disasters, from the craziness, the chaos, the fear, the impending doom stories that are around a lot lately, that it's just getting worse and worse. People are just wanting out. And so it there's a huge cry for who's going to help. Where's the way out? Where do I leave to? Where do I go to? Where do I live? How do I ascend? How do I get how do I get out? How do I escape the matrix? How do I save myself? How do I, you know, how do we save humanity? And with that kind of mentality and attitude, that's massive disempowerment. That's complete or not complete maybe, for but a level of disassociation with the self. It's like, ooh, get me out. And it's up there, out there, somewhere. The power, the energy of us is going out. That person over there, that person representing that political side, they're the right one. They're the right leader. They'll change the world. Oh, oh, hold on. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe it's that person over there. And then everyone's like, doo, 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 like little ants hill mob. Blah, 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 blah. And they just that person over there. No, maybe that person. And then they're like, hold on a minute. Maybe both people, both sides are being operated by the same puppet master, and they're all having their strings pulled, and then they're pulling your strings and our strings, and it's like <gasps> Who's going to save us? Who's going to rescue us? Do we need to warn people that there's, you know, major tidal waves? How do we warn people when the floods are coming? How do we pack up enough food and pack up enough supplies and water and get free electricity so that we don't can, you know, can live off grid and not have to deal with all of the polluted foods and crazy systems? It's like, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. Because it makes you go crazy with that idea, with that attitude, like, <gasps> how do I get out? That's the, that's the very thing that's going to put you in stress mode, distress mode, that's going to take your spirit, your energy, your power out of your body, your attention, your consciousness, out of yourself, out of your body, and be putting it in. Maybe it's this thing over there. Maybe it's that thing over there. But maybe I need to do this. Maybe I need to do that. This is how I rescue myself. This is how I get rescued. This is, and it's like, ah, can you see what I'm saying here? <laughs> right? I know I'm kind of muppeting around right now, but that's to give you the impression like I'm making it a bit bigger and dramatizing what everybody is doing. Not everybody many people are doing and whether it's like uh you know and i'm going to go through my list now and see if any of these resonate with you and not because it's like oh i'm on the naughty list tara's naughty list no but more like let's come at this with a curious innocent open-hearted attitude of am i kidding myself right now Am I thinking that Tara's being really nuts right now and like, but that's not me. Let's not kid ourselves, okay? First thing on my list, what's going to get you to 5D and ascension? And then basically that question, it's a bit like saying, what's going to get me into heaven? What's going to get me out of trouble, out of all this pit of darkness, off this normal earthly 3D realm into a nice place where it's all light and love and everything's fine. What's going to get me there? And I'm, you know, oh, with the angels, I'm with God. I'm in a happy place. 
and not dealing with this density down here. Basically, 5D, ascension and heaven, kind of same thing. It's the same frequency. Heaven is fifth dimensional energy. Fifth dimensional energy is the energy of absolute love. Oh, it's the angelic. It's the heart realm. It's just pure love. And you have different frequencies of love and the gratitude and the bliss and the higher states and the, you know, is beautiful. But it starts from moving out of this density, out of the fourth dimension, which is the mind, and into the fifth dimension, which is the heart. So how are you going to get into 5D means basically how you're going to get into heaven and become an angel or be with the angels, hang out with angels. And so also it's really curious before we go into my list of seven things, and I will do that very soon, I promise. But it's a really, really good idea to ask yourself, why do you want to know that? Why do you want to know where are you trying to get to? Really ask yourself, hold on, like press pause on the brain for a minute and go, where do I think I'm trying to get to? What is it that I think I actually want? Because there's a lot of panic activity. And people aren't even aware, a lot of the time, some people are, a lot of people aren't even aware that they're panicking. They've just got high anxiety. They're coming through their head. Do, 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 what shall I do? Calculate, calculate, what shall I, you know, think, the answer, oh my God, what shall I do? Or, oh, you know, let me go and take some ayahuasca, let me go and get stoned, let me go and do something else that's going to, like, ease the anxiety of this panic. And, you know, just actually ask yourself, hello, me, connect, ask your heart. Where is it that you think you're actually trying to get to? Why are you trying to get there? Like, is that going to solve your problem? Is that going to get you where you think you want to get to? This is a really wise question to ask yourself. Don't skip that bit. Because if you skip that bit, you're also going to keep doing what you keep doing that's not going to get you to ascension and 5D in heaven or wherever you think you want to get. It's not going to get you there. You need to be conscious about your actions and what you're believing and then what you're projecting and what you're creating. You need to actually come right back to the, the source of all that activity and go, where do I actually think I'm trying to get to? Be honest. Um, and so... This is my list. Ta -da! List of what's going to work versus what's not going to work, in my humble opinion. Take it or leave it, right? Let me know which one resonates with you. Number one, positive affirmations. Everybody loves positive affirmations. I mean, everywhere I look, there's positive affirmations. <laughs> they're on Instagram, they're on Facebook, they're on YouTube, they're on everywhere. It's like, let's all say uh, positive things. Now, I'm not against positive affirmations. Be positive, of course be positive, right? I'm not saying be negative. And I also am very aware that of the power of I am into claiming, into commanding. I am the great I am of source, of isness, of pure consciousness. I am that. And yes, that's true, you are that. But you also have to bring your consciousness of that which you are into alignment, into the same position, into the same seat, into the same vibration as that I am consciousness. And you don't get there by just chanting it. I mean, it's a really good one. I mean, look at wonderful Wayne Dyer. He wrote the books on the I Am Consciousness. I love that guy. He was wonderful. He was a beautiful soul. And he still died with an illness. Like, didn't he die of cancer? I can't even say that word, D-I-E, anymore, can I? I have to say, unalived. That's another video. Anyway, no, no it's not. Let's just do an aside. Why is that word being used? Why can we not use the word that actually means the thing that it means, which is to D-I-E, which is to exit this body, which is for our spirits to go reincarnate somewhere else or our, you know, 
bodies to compost into the I know I've gone off on one I know I'm sorry but why are we not allowed to use that word anymore that's nature what's an unalived is it somewhere in between being alive and d-i-a-d d-i-e-d no d-e-a-d <laughs> die <laughs> let me come back on track uh, don't do that anymore uh, me so Putting positive affirmations, you have to be the vibration of the thing that you're affirming. Just chanting it and speaking it and saying it won't do all of that. It won't undo everything where you've been not that vibration. Like think of all the times in your life you have not been in that I am isness, pure consciousness vibration. How much percent of your life have you not been in that vibration? Just saying it doesn't make all of the rest of that time and energy and investment into not being in your I am just suddenly line up to it. It's really good. It's I mean, I'm do it, but it's also got a place. And just positively affirming is like taking this is another analogy of what I'm just trying to say. It's like taking a oops, a really yucky cake like let's say the first cake you ever made and it was just horrible and there was just like not enough sugar and there was I don't know you put salt in it by accident or I don't know it was just and you burnt it and it was just disgusting right it's like, ugh. so what you're going to do is you're going to take some nice icing some nice frosting cover that cake and then make it look really pretty on the surface I love this, I love this, this is beautiful, I am beautiful, I am beautiful, I am beautiful, I am beautiful, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm loved, I'm loved, I'm lo you're piling on the icing, and then you just go and then serve that up to someone else. Look have some of my nice cake that I made you. <laughs> like this is who I am, this represents me. I'm a positive person. Look at that. I'm gonna sugarcoat, icing coat, everything. That doesn't work either, because you know the moment you take a bite of that cake or you know, do you think other people are swallowing that as well? It's like, oh, nice. <laughs> Eat your own cake before you give it to someone else, right? It's like you can't put nice stuff over the top of something which is not good. And when we've got really yucky, unresolved, unhealed, wounding, baggage, pain, shame, blame, trauma, suffering, oh just wretched you know that horrible that sometimes these feelings that I feel with people with, with my clients and my students we go to those places where it's like it's unbearable it's like going into the sewer right without a, without the the uh, the oxygen and you're just like this is bad but you have to go okay now we have to breathe this in we have to go into it because that's how to heal it and it sounds horrible I made it sound really horrible but it's like you can't just cover it up and then pretend it's gone. So let me move on. Positive affirmations, in my opinion, it's never going to work. Seen it, done it, it doesn't work. And see my clients who do it. Mm. Anyway, next one. You Yeah, you have to go and meet the thing that you're affirming over. That's what I wrote. And actually just be honest, be real. Like take the icing off and go, what's underneath this icing? What's underneath? What am I trying to cover over with my positive affirmations and it's like the thing that the belief that you've got is the yucky thing is the yucky cake and then you go no I'm going to change it I'm going to change that belief with this belief instead that old belief is still there it's ingrained it doesn't work like that anyway I, I don't know who told us these things I don't know why so many people believe that it's an easy way out. Looks like it's an easy thing to do. You just chant the same thing over and over and over again, and then it changes things. Trust me, I've seen people that do this. I grew up with people that do this. It doesn't work. If it does, let me know. Like, tell me, seriously, if it had a major impact and it transformed everything and then it healed something for you, let me know, because I've not seen that yet. Number two, <laughs> frequency music. Who listens to frequency uh, meditation music especially when you're going to sleep now I do too I love it I think it's really really nice is that going to get you to heaven is that going to get you into 5d no 
Again, let's be real. Um, number one, it's like it's nice because it goes into your subconscious mind and frequencies. Um, everything is frequency and it will work on that frequency. And it's really nice. It's like being stroked. You know, if you're stressed, you get a nice little stroke. Does it go to the root of the cause that caused your stress? No. Does it give it a nice little stroke so it feels better for a minute? Yeah. That's what that frequency music does. It's so lovely and it's really nice. And I'm not saying don't do it or positive affirmations, but it's like, do you know the frequency that's really going to work for you? The frequency that's going to go to the root cause of the thing that you want the frequency music to heal. And it's your own voice. You are the perfect instrument to heal yourself. Your voice, your exact tone is perfect, perfectly matched to heal every cell in your body. Every record in your soul library is your voice. Isn't that amazing? And I just, I mean, that's beautiful. So healing music is lovely. Trust me, I like it. Is it as impactful as your own voice or even as someone else's voice? If you listen to some other nice healing meditation and somebody else is talking and then you just fall asleep to it or you, you know, sit there meditating, visualizing, pretending you haven't fallen asleep to it. <laughs> Nowhere near. Your voice is perfect. And, and I love that because, you know, sometimes you hear someone's voice and it's like, or no, wrong frequency for you. Um, but you're your own perfect voice. So um, playing these things as well and doing these subliminal things, they're really good. I did, you know, I've tried loads of these things, I've done tons of this stuff and it's really nice. But the thing is, a lot of it's to do with sleeping and you know, going into the lower parts of the brain, but whilst you're not doing it. And the whole point of ascension, awakening, uh, heaven and, and 5D is that you're awakening. You're coming out of your subconscious. You're making your subconscious conscious. You're actually going to the places in your psyche, in your subconscious, where these stored traumas are, where these, I don't know, disempowered, broken, wounded parts of you are, and you have to consciously go there. Nothing else bypasses your conscious journey for you. You can't have someone else do that conscious journey for you. You can have psychic healers and spiritual healers and wonderful, wonderful things, and it's like that lovely stroke or, it's, you know, it's like having surgery, you know, on a cancer, you remove it. But then guess what happens? Oh, it's gone for a while. Remission. Great. Yay. But the cause of that tumor didn't get addressed at all. So it's like pulling out the weeds, but leaving the taproot. You won't see a weed for a little while, but it's only a matter of time before the taproot starts to grow more weeds. And so our psyche is like that. Our consciousness is like that. You cannot just like bypass that conscious awakening for yourself. You can't have somebody else do the conscious part for you and then you get to ascend. Does that make sense? Won't happen. Um, nothing replaces you doing the journey and becoming conscious if you want to be you know, more awakened in that heavenly realm, in that unconditional love realm. Only you can do the journey. It's like no one else can walk into the gates of heaven for you. You have to do the walking. <laughs> and, you know, maybe that's scary to a lot of you, but not when you know just how to walk and where the path is. Actually, it's as easy as breathing. Actually, it's as easy as walking. The worst part is, the scary part is the thought of it and all the emotions and the stuff that gets triggered of like, gosh, me walking up to the gates of heaven now and knocking on the door and saying, am I good enough to get in? Like whatever comes up for you, just thinking about that, that's where you need to bring consciousness to and not bypass it. 
in my opinion. And I do this stuff, by the way. So that's why I can talk about it. Um, number three, watching conspiracy truth of videos and consuming information. Now, I love this too. Like, I'm, I, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm all over it. I mean, I'm not a complete addict. I do actually have moments of watching it and then switch off because it's like, God, it's like consuming any other TV media stuff. It's just a different kind of narrative, it gives you a different kind of hit, different kick from watching it but it's still the same stuff. It's still consuming. Now, and I say conspiracy truth there because there's not many things that you can call a conspiracy that don't have truth in them. I mean, show me one. If you're a conspiracy person out there or you, you, you're you like me and you go, well, you think, you know, this is, this is I'm not even going to name them. The, <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> I know so many things. It's unbelievable. I think I know so many things. Um, I've been brought up on this stuff like my entire life, my entire childhood. I was raised on what people call conspiracy theories. Um, so I've seen a lot of things. Obviously not everything, right? I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet. I'm just saying probably if you're aware of something, I'm probably aware of it too. So um, feel free to send me your stuff. Like I love that. Um, let me know what you've got. Um, and I say conspiracy truth uh, literally because, you know, there it comes from a theory, right? To conspire, to go against. And then it becomes, huh, there is, there's, there's some truth in that. So let's conspire and talk about, is that true? And then it becomes a theory. And then the theory then kind of, you know, stands up to things that have happened and we can see around us and go, huh, there's some truth in that. Look at that. Maybe it's not all true because now we're in a disinformation and information war, which is crazy just to confuse people even more. And yet I see, you know, I was on, what's his name? Charlie Ward's show back in, when was that? 2020, 2021? Charlie Ward was one of the big guys back then, millions and millions of followers who, and it was all, you know, they were the the Trump followers and you know, putting out all the good stuff and the conspiracy stuff, you know, and um, they, I was part of all of that stuff. And there's a lot of truth to it. However, there's so much disinformation. A lot of these things, I mean, the vast majority of the things that these people said have not come to pass. But there was a vast amount of consumption happening, and there still is. These people were really good at, at gathering like millions, millions of people's energy and attention, hoovering it all up for themselves. And people like me as well were giving it to them, going, wow, this sounds really amazing. And then obviously, like, we've all got to look at our own compasses. So I'm not saying I was totally sucked in. I'm looking at my own compass, and I'm kind of going, yeah. I see this and this and this happening. It's never straightforward. There's a chessboard of information of things that are actually being played simultaneously. But you go, okay, there's some truth in this thing over here. Let, let me go and look into it, right? Which is what I'm sure you guys are doing too. Now, when we do that, we are literally pouring our energy. We're giving our power. We're giving the hopium it got coined back in 2020. It's a great phrase. We're just pouring that hopium out into other people, this person's going to give me the correct information. This person's going to tell me the right thing. And if I follow that person, I'm going to hear the right, you know, right version. That's a very high risk thing to do. And if that gives you an entertainment value, then go ahead and do it. I would highly encourage you, please do not, it's like giving your heart to a stranger. It's like giving your life into somebody else's hands. I really encourage you to take your life back, to take your heart back, to take your energy back, to take any worship you have of anybody out there in these information videos, whatever you're into, Whatever you think is true, 
if we're all doing the same thing, doesn't matter which side you're, you're following, and which narrative you believe is true or not true, when you're still out there consuming the information, we're all in the same boat, we're all doing the same thing, everybody's giving their power away. That is not going to get you where you want to go. That is massively distracting you from where you want to go, even if the information is really, really good. I mean, this information, right? I'm giving you information. I'm. This is one of the reasons I stopped putting out videos for like a year or two, because I just didn't want to add to the noise. I'm like, I don't really want your attention other than that I'll tell you to give your attention back to yourself. Personally, I don't need it. But in order for me to, you know, do my do the thing which my heart tells me to do, which is to help myself and then help others, is like I just have to tell you what works for me and what help what works for the people that I help. So you know, it's not all about me. This is about. Uh, thank you though for listening to this video, because then I can tell you, you know, thank you for listening to me and <laughs> taking it seriously, but. Go and give your attention back to yourself. And sometimes that's a massive chasm to, to, to get through because you're so, or we are so taken out there. We're so addicted to the phone. We're so addicted to the channel. We're so addicted to the information. We're so addicted to the adrenaline hit or addicted to the fear mongering or addicted to the, I don't know, this, yay, we're better than them. Whatever it is, it's, it's draining your resources, it's massively distracting you, it's ruining your attention span, it's not doing anything for your level of consciousness. The, a lot of what people talk about the Great Awakening is, yes, it's about revealing stuff that's happened. And I, I love this too, right? The big reveals of what's going on in Hollywood, the reveals that's going on you know, in our consumerist society, in the corporations, in the governments, in the money, in the food, in the skies, in the in the other races and other beings, the whole lot, right? Revealing the truth. That's wonderful. That's exciting. It's like, yeah, or it can also be terrifying. So it's like watching the movie screen. So as long as you watch the movie and then go back home and bring your awareness to yourself, Bring your consciousness back, like plug in what's real, what's true, what's right here, what's always been real, always been true, isn't all about adrenaline hits, isn't all about the highs and the lows, isn't about stealing away your soul and your energy and your attention, and it is about being conscious. And when we're used to pouring our attention and energy out, we're that, that's not conscious, that's mindless. And so it's like you have to build your consciousness muscle again, like any muscle that's been, you, you know, not used, it goes into atrophy. And human consciousness is massively in atrophy right now, is what I can, you know, I would assess, generally speaking. And we need to, like, exercise that consciousness muscle. And you can just start with your breath. And I have a breathe and receive meditation. Um... I'm just getting the page ready. I'm going to put the link down below so you can sign up and you can get the breathe and receive meditation. It's a 20 minute thing. And it's not one of those things where I do all the work for you, by the way. I'm not just going to say pretty things. You actually have to do it. It's a you do the work of breathing. I can't breathe for you. I can't be conscious for you. So I'm going to help you get conscious of your breathing. And we're going to say some words. We're going to do some things. And hopefully I teach you and guide you how to do that. And it really, 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 really works. It's really cool. So I can put that link below and you can sign up and get it. It's totally free. No obligations. If you don't like my emails, unsubscribe, whatever. It's all good. So um, there's that. Truth doesn't exist in the 3D realm of this or that, black or white. That isn't truth. That's duality. The Bigger truth is we live in a dualistic reality that comes from one source. So when you get caught in either side of the duality or just get caught in both sides of the duality, you're not going to find the truth there. That's the reality of the third dimension. Fifth dimension, the truth is love, like heaven. 
It's total love and light. That's the truth. And where is the truth? Where is the love and light? Do we have to go up to get it? Do we have to leave our bodies and ascend our spirits and go knock on the door and say, was I a good soul? Was I a good spirit? Am, am I pure enough? <laughs> no. <laughs> your truth, your, your love, your light is all in here. You are it. You've been looking where for yourself where you're not. <laughs> you're not out there. The truth isn't out there. The light isn't out there. It's in here. Come back and get it. It's yours. Come claim it. Come own it. <laughs> and the I love you me method is literally the seven steps that will walk you to your home so that you can do that. It's really cool. So uh, number four, converting people to your beliefs or faith. Right. You could you could totally blame me for doing this right now because I'm trying to convert you to love yourselves. <laughs> oh, no, it's true. I totally am. I am totally doing that. Right. But there's a lot of people out there who are preachers and going out there to convert people to their faith, to their belief, to get followers. And you've got to really pay attention to that. Who out there is gathering followers like it's going out of fashion and what's their energy what's their vibration where are they coming from now there are good people out there trust me you know and it's great that they've got lots of followers you know i'm not dissing that i there's a bunch of people i really like so i'm not saying like don't trust anybody with followers i'm just saying that are people like it's like the blind leading the blind or walking the talk. So if you want what that person has, like if you want to learn about being a great CEO and making great business and learning how to make great deals of money, then watch Diary of a CEO, for example. Great show, loads of followers, brilliant. If that person who's giving you, you know, who being a living example of what you want to be, then great. Listen to them, learn from them. But still, it's not about like going out there and telling everybody else what they should be doing. Um, especially and and I'm saying this from a really learned place, right? I grew up in a situation where everybody was, you know, preaching to everybody. And I still, you still hear this and people, the know-it-alls that you tell you what you should be doing, tell you what the real truth is. And they, my God, I just find people like that obnoxious because they're clearly not doing it. And if they're not doing it, then why listen to them? Why can't, right? Converting other people is not going to get you into heaven. You actually have to do the work yourself. Um, let me, let's just draw it there because I'm going off on one on that rant. Um, you actually just have to walk the talk. And the, uh, actually, there's one more part I want to say about this. So let's go back to 2020. Let's go back to when certain people, certain ones of us were trying to wake people up to the fact that they should not take the pharmaceutical experiment um, because it would be very dangerous for their well-being. And we were really trying to tell people that. And then, you know, red-pilling people. But the thing is, if we are trying to put our beliefs, and I think every single one of this, one of us does this, to our local environment, right? Maybe not out there on the platform to millions, but to the people around us, our friends and family, we try and tell them what's what and push our beliefs onto them in the hope that maybe we'll convert them and they'll listen to us. But the trouble is, when you red pill somebody, when you give them your opinion of something that can topple their reality, to total their world view, and you haven't given them the inner stability first, it's like propping a building up with scaffolding and then taking the scaffolding away. The building's going to collapse. You can prop the building up with scaffolding, fix the structure of the building, 
then take the scaffolding away. So if you want to take the blindfold off somebody, you have to, like the, the scaffolding, make sure that they're in a stable place first. They've got something real to anchor to, something solid. When you've got them connected to that and then they have a strong sense of the I am, of I know who I am and I'm connected in that vibration, then the outer stuff can start to fall away without completely leveling their world. That's really important. If when we love somebody, we're going to do that. Otherwise, it becomes a battle of beliefs. That's about, you know, ego. That's about being approved of. That's, that's issues. That's personal issues coming up. That's not what it seems like on the surface. Okay, so Let's love each other, give each other a sense of stability and love and not just dismantle one another's reality by trying to red pill people and convert people. OK, oh, nearly fine. Finished. Number five, praying and asking for forgiveness from the almighty, from God, from the. Some other external divinity. Now, I believe I'm into divinity. I'm into the great spirit, holy spirit, whatever you want to call it, divine masculine. So I'm not slating anything. I'm not slating anybody. What I'm trying to say is to have your sins forgiven so that you can go to heaven. Nobody else can do that for you whilst you're still attached to it. How can I give an example? Um, I've got a hair thing here. I don't know if this is quite going to do it. I just happen to have this hair doodah. I'm not advertising anything. I couldn't get the thing to work. Hence <laughs> my hair. <laughs> Nobody knows how to make that thing charge. Anyway, right? Let's say this is the evil thing that I've got this bad feeling in me. Let's say I've got a bad feeling in my heart. Uh, and I just want to be forgiven. I want God to take it off me. I want to lift my weights, lift my sins, lift my burdens. And I want to just ascend and go to heaven. And I want to just have this darkness off me. Right. I'm sure you can relate. And so this is my darkness. And then I say, God, please take it from me. Take take this off me, God. And I'm giving it to God. <laughs> That's actually not supposed to happen. Right. I'm giving it to God. Because what needs to happen here, you see this cord is because I'm seriously attached. I'm attached to this. I believe that I've done wrong. I know that I, or I'm to blame or I'm not good enough or I'm not lovable or somebody's hurt me, whatever it is, whatever the darkness is. And I'm trying to give it up to God. And the thing is, I actually have to unplug it myself from myself and say, here, have the whole deal. There you go. I was really attached to this because I believed that and I held on to this belief and held on to this painful, wounded, dark thing because I thought that it would give me such and such and I would get such and such from it and it made me a certain kind of person or it may be a better person. If I suffer, then I'm a better person, whatever it is, right? My attachment to this also has to go. And then you can hand the whole thing back to the manufacturer, to the people that made this thing and say, this doesn't work for me. Have it back. <laughs> Give me a refund. <laughs> so, yeah, you think I planned these things. I didn't plan this. It's totally random. So what I'm trying to say is you must actually forgive yourself. It's all about forgiving you. It's already a done deal that you're forgiven by the great almighty, by God, by source, by love, by Mother Earth, by Gaia, by the angels. You are forgiven. There is nothing to forgive. The only issue is that we are plugged into this stuff that we think is ours and that we have owned and we got seriously attached to, multiply places attached to. And it's on us to release and heal and free ourselves. Like freedom is your business, not God's business. You were born free. And if you don't feel free and you haven't claimed your freedom, then you that's an inner work. You have to forgive yourself. So number five, God can't forgive you until whilst you're still attached. You have to forgive yourself of all the stuff. And then you have to go into the contract 
that you made with yourself about why you decided to stay attached to this in the first place. I will help you with that. I'm rushing over it. It's a major deal. I can help you with that if you want to go into it. Um, basically, yeah, get in touch with me and I'll see what I can, what thing I can offer you that works best for you. Number six, waiting for a saviour. We're nearly there. Waiting for a saviour. Again, we're looking at maybe political leaders. Oh, who is right? Is this person right? Is that person right? Oh, my God. Are they good? Are they bad? Are they evil? Oh, my word. I and mean, it's a fun adventure, right? It's like watching tennis. Um, so how long has humanity done that? How long has humanity said, if we believe in the God Ra and we make thousands and thousands and thousands of blood sacrifices and we, you know, give up our virgins and we give up our goats and our chickens, um, we will, oh, my darling friend's calling me. We will appease the gods and then we will be saved for this Armageddon. We will be, you know, we'll win this battle, we'll win this war. How long has humanity done that? I'm going to go to church and I'm going to pray and I'm going to give extra money at church this week. I'm going to go and feed some orphans. I'm going to go and help a homeless man and then God will shine on me and you know, I will be saved because I am good. And I just need to like, you know, if I take out the bins and I empty the rubbish and, you know, will I be saved? Is my, am I a good enough person? You know, and I'm slightly kind of sending this up, but again, for dramatic purposes, because we actually do this stuff. I'm making light of it because it's kind of funny and it's cute and we all do it, but it's like, is that actually working? Is somebody going to save you? I think that we can look at, you know, ancient civilizations like this group of people I was with last night. You know, they were talking about going back to the past, looking at the ancient civilizations, going, we, people talk about going back to our roots, going back to the olden days, going back to smaller communities, going back to living off the, off the earth, going back to this, that and the other. And, and it's like, guys, I don't think that going back to the past is going to save us. I don't think that the aliens in the future are going to save us. I don't think that any religious leader or any political leader is going to save us. Let's face it, there's limitations with how, how many people anybody can save anybody, right, or change anything. And at the end of the day, when humanity's been waiting long enough, how much longer do you think you have to wait for it to happen? Because you could effectively keep waiting the rest of your life and it will never happen. It will constantly be that dangling carrot, like, like the Nasara Jasara. Like how many of you thought that that was going to happen? I was like, totally, I was, did the research. I was like, for sure, this is going to happen. And maybe it will, but it hasn't happened yet. OK, I've been raised in a way that I've been listening to prophecies and things that would happen since I was this big, this big, guys, like literally. And they still haven't come to pass. So how much longer does the carrot get dangled while everybody makes a grab and, you know, cons you as much as they possibly can before you wake up and go, you know what, all of you carry on, I'm just going to save myself. And that sounds really selfish, but it's not, it's enlightened, because the moment you save yourself, the moment you get a life raft, and you get in the life raft, then you can paddle around once you're in the life raft, with your life jacket on, you can paddle around and see if anybody else wants to get in the raft with the life jacket with you. I, and I am that person, like I'm in the life raft, I've got my life jacket, I'm good, but I'm like, it gets lonely, where's my buddies, where's my friends, come on, there's enough room in this boat for everybody, if you want to save yourself, you actually have to decide to stop waiting around in the water for someone to rescue you, and then just get out, you know, if you see a boat, get in it, <laughs> I'm offering you a boat, 
get in it. You have to, and I'm not going to do the rescuing for you either. I couldn't possibly, no matter how much I love you, you still have to do it for yourself. It's that choosing. My soul belongs to me. My soul is in my keeping. I am the responsible owner. Therefore, my soul needs some cleaning, needs some healing, needs some attention, needs some listening to, needs some love, needs some cuddles, needs some empathy, needs to pour out all the crap to make space for some love. You need to give that to your own soul. You need to give that to your own mind, your own heart, your own emotional body. You need to do it. It's like you need to do a physical body cleanse. I can't do that for you. I can tell you how to do it, but I can't do it for you. You would have to still do your own liver cleanse or whatever, colon cleanse. So choosing to love yourself enough to save yourself. It's love for yourself that will make you do that or enough pain and desperation that kicks you in the backside enough times when you go, oh my God, I've got no other option left. I've got to, got to save myself. Where do I start? You start with learning to receive your breath. You start with realizing that this is about coming home to love and therefore you have to love yourself to come home. It's like if the I am vibration of your I am affirmations is love, then you have to be the love and embody the love that you are so that you are also in the I am love vibration. Does that make sense? And I wish it were true that I could just say, I love myself, I love myself, I love myself, I love myself, I love myself all day long, much easier. At least I think it would be easier. Fact is it doesn't work and it, it doesn't give you the satisfaction. It doesn't give you the journey. It doesn't, doesn't give you that feeling of, oh, I did it. It's surface level. So becoming the savior, trying to heal and save others is a great plan if you're doing it first for yourself. And what you're doing for yourself actually works. And you've got a track record and it's proven that it works. Um, it's like eating your cake first and then sharing it with others. Take your own medicine first, then share it with others, you know, and we all get in the boat and paddle together. So there you go. That's my list. What do you think? Any of those you relate to? Um, and no judgment, right? I'm I'm not coming from that place. I think it's kind of funny. I think it's I think we're all really funny, really cute in a tragic but hilarious kind of a way. And you've got to love us. You, you just got to make light of the heavy stuff. There's some serious stuff coming up. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to talk a lot more. I think I need to get more consistent. I've been right rubbish at that. Um, but basically, I'm going to, there's, we've got, what have we got? We've got Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up soon. So I want to talk a lot more about the forgiveness and getting into peace and really getting our energy really beautifully tuned up um, over this Christmas holiday, over the, um, the winter solstice period, because the darkest, longest night is one of my favorites in the calendar. And then moving into our new year, 2025, um, it's go big or go home time. And maybe we put those two things together, go big and go home to ourselves. Like, let's all out focus on coming back to the love that we are and having our own wings and manifesting. You know, we get to manifest that which we are. When you're in that angelic love frequency, you're in your I am. It's like you have the ripple effect. You then are ultimately like turning over you're you're changing the energy around you so that everything that comes into contact with your energy starts changing you'll have that catalytic effect on people and if that's why you're here and that really resonates with you then I really want to share things with you I've got so much to share with you to help you do that get in your lifeboat first of you Heal yourself, love yourself, come home to yourself, go big with that. 
go all out. It's time. We do have some major things coming. I'll bring you some new news soon. Sending you so much love. Give me a shout. Send me an email. Love you lots. I'll see you soon. Bye.